In this video, we're going to talk about Stallcrog, and this is a fun little solo RPG from Head Cheese Productions. So let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. Martin over at Head Cheese Productions sent me a PDF copy of his recent project called Stallcrog. And he first sent me the Ashcan edition of this game, which was kind of like a, I don't know, a rough draft or it wasn't completely finished. Um, one of the things Martin told me is he wanted to get the game out on Drive-Thru RPG. There'll be a link in the description if you're interested. And depending on the success of the game, uh, he would then start taking those resources to start adding in more art and putting more effort behind uh, getting it polished and getting it more up to speed and kind of in line with one of his other games called Escape the Zone. These two games are similar in mechanics you're a, and a little bit in theme. You're a stalker. You're going into these areas that were visited by aliens there's high levels of radiation there's all kinds of weird stuff going on and you're trying to accomplish a task or a mission um, but stallcrog takes it in a different direction so it's in that sense it's different than this game but i you know martin's trying to get this game get it popular or get some support behind it so that he can add in more art and do some cool things so that's why you're going to see two different covers um, this was the Ashcan version, which was the early version. This is the more up-to-date version. If you do pick this up, uh, it's like $5. Uh, there's, you get two files, which I love when creators do this. I wish more creators did this. Uh, you get a print-friendly version, and you get the regular full version. Um, don't mind. I don't know if you can see the lines on the print. My printer's acting up. I think my printer's about to die. Um, I do print a lot um, because it's making all kinds of noise and it's just a mess. But anyways, so I printed the uh, less art version um, for this video. If by any chance uh, you're one of those folks like me that you like to bind books, like this is a great game for such a project, uh, especially doing my simple bind method, which I've talked about plenty of times in the past of doing a little staple on the on the edge and covering it with paper it's a great little project for that all of that being said um, and yeah i'll get the legal stuff out of the way yes martin sent me a free copy of the pdf to review on the channel said and done let's move on so what's going to set this one apart from escape the zone is you're trying to retire which strikes a big nerve for me because i'm trying to retire in real life but you're a stalker this just kind of struck me because you are trying to retire so you're kind of going through the zone to get a hundred dollars so that you can retire i wish i could retire on a hundred dollars uh you're going to begin the game with 20 hit points the only possessions is an automatic rifle with unlimited ammo so you're not tracking ammo in this game and you got six bucks and then what you're gonna you can use your six dollars to uh, buy anything from the black market and also to rest to recover your HP because this version of Martin's uh, game is more of a campaign. You are going to be going back into the zone and taking on jobs to get your hundred dollars. You're not going to get that on one job. So you're going to be going back on a regular basis. Here's your black market. You can roll 2d6 randomly to get something or you may you know just pick and choose your own item if you so desired and this talks about resting after a job you can go rest and you can recover hp in a safe place so basically for every dollar you can recover two hp you can rest during the game to recoup hp but there's a risk of something happening so you take that chance because you are in the zone so you're in the game at the time and we see this in a lot of RPGs, like in dangerous places, you can't rest. You have to find a safe place. Um, so we got fights. So you're going to encounter people. You fight till one person is dead. 
The only way you can escape from a fight is if you have an item that lets you do so. Artifacts. Uh, artifacts are a little bit different. Um, you fight an anomaly or you encounter an anomaly, there's a possibility you're going to get an artifact. You have to roll a d6 and on a 5+, plus, then you get the artifact. And the artifacts are found in the back of the book on page 17. So there you go. And then you just have other tests uh, you may be taking, and the rules will pretty much explain. This is a pretty straightforward system, a lot like um, Four Against Darkness. Uh, X is always a number that you have to defeat in the game. So if we're in a fight and someone has a fight value of three, you got to roll over a three, five. I defeated it. Done. Um, not, every, not things don't have HP or anything like that. You just defeat the fight. This is a pretty fast paced, uh, game. You're playing more of a campaign and you're trying to generate funds. So it, it's just a little bit more fast paced. Here are some special conditions that you can have during the game. You can be shaking, irradiated, or in darkness, and they affect your uh, some of your stats. And then you have uh, jobs and how much they pay. So you're basically taking on jobs to generate money uh, so that you can retire. So talks a little bit about jobs. You can... Uh, forfeit jobs, but you can only forfeit three jobs. If you do forfeit three jobs during your campaign, you're basically defeated. That it ends your game. So you want to be careful about forfeiting jobs too quickly. Every time you successfully complete a job, you roll two d6 for money. So woohoo, six, seven, eight. Uh, that that got me eight bucks extra for doing the job. Uh, anything you find in the zone, you keep unless the job is. Uh, specific to finding something in the zone then you do not get to keep that and you can also sell stuff on the black market and half the price rounded up artifacts just sell for ten dollars a piece so to generate your job you just roll a d6 i rolled a four and what you're going to do is just go to the number four so this is collect the sample this will tell you basically what you're doing it will give you your target location of where you're going to go and then it gives you some special rules for that. And your target location is basically your conclusion for the job. And to get to that portion, you have to go on your excursion. And your excursion are all the, it's kind of like a point crawl. You're going to go to cross the condor, then you're going to go to a zone encounter, then you're going to go to a deep zone encounter, and then you're going to hit your target location. And each one of these points in this crawl are going to have a table you're going to roll on your d6 you're going to take whatever the result is defeat that or complete that and then move on to the next part so here's the condor here's your zone encounters you're just going to keep rolling your d6 and some of these are just going to give you loot if you roll good enough you have your deep zone encounter and then you're going to end up in your target location when we look at our job it gives us our target location of the forest so you just find your forest uh, location and here it all is. You just kind of, you roll on this, you complete it, and then you completed the job. You're done and collect your, your money at the end, sell off your items, go rest, do whatever you got to do. And then you start over again, trying to retire your character. That's the basic gist of all of this. And it is, it's just a fun little game that you can play quickly easily you don't need a lot you just need 2d6 this little book uh it does come with a character sheet i do find that the character sheet is uh, it's lacking some information um, maybe martin can update the character sheet because there's no place for your hp and one of the things you can do is you can forfeit jobs and there's no place to mark forfeiting the jobs on the character sheet uh, so those are just two things that are kind of missing. There's still a lot of space on this character sheet. So maybe that's something Martin can look into. I have been playing the game. It's a it's a fun little game. Uh, and what I've done is I, I played a couple sessions and I've left myself blank. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, playing on my game. So now we're going to do my next excursion point. Um, yeah, you're going to look like I already played it because I did. Uh, while I was recording, my battery died and I recorded everything and played so far and realized it and pfft, now I got to redo everything. So 
let me start from the beginning here. Um, I've added a little bit of an RPG element to my version of the game, which is something I like to do. Because uh, this isn't a heavy RPG, this is more of a mechanical game of just going through trying to collect your loot to retire. So what I've done is um, my character, which is Bastine, uh, works for a mercenary group called Black Dog. And you are hired to go into the zone and, you know, pick up stuff or escort people, whatever the different missions are. But you're called by your agent. So your agent has found you a job. Roll your D6. So maybe kind of like the movie Transport. Um, you know, you don't ask questions. You just do the job, get it over with, and move on. So I'm chilling uh, in my, my hovel of a home because I'm saving up all of my pennies to retire. And I get the phone rings. My agent calls. Um, we don't use names. We don't, uh, like, I'm Mr. Blue, uh, Reservoir Dog reference. And, um, yeah, so you, you, you go on. So we've kind of gone over the rules. So what we need to do is roll for our mission and figure out what our agent's going to give us, which we've already done. We've got the escort mission. So if we come over here to the escort mission, we read the rules for the mission. A scientist hires you to be their guide and bodyguard to escort them to a target location and back. You're not sure you understand what they want uh, to observe, sample, or collect, and frankly, you don't really care. As long as they make it worth your while, the job is automatically over if your client dies and you do not get to paid. So our target location is the bunker. So I've written all this information down. And if we go further on into the rule book, you will find, you know, here are our zone uh, things, but here's our bunker encounter. So we're going to reach this, overcome whatever is here, and then be good to go. And then there are some special rules. Every time you suffer damage, roll a d6 before subtracting it from your total. On a 1, your client gets hit instead. Your client starts with 6 HP. They do not attack. You can put armor on them and heal them with items, however. So, we have our scientists with 6 HP. We need to keep them protected. So, I'm going to take off my bulletproof vest and put it on my scientist because I want my scientist to live because uh, I want to get paid. So anyway, so that's our special rule. So we've got our notes. Now we're going to just go on our excursion. We're going to start the steps. There are some optional rules here for weather if you want to make the game harder. I find the game to be pretty hard on its own. So we start our mission. We're going to go to the Cordon. Uh, you read the little blurb at the beginning of each of the different excursion points. Access to the exclusion zone is strictly prohibited to anyone unless they're mandated by the Institute. The Condor is guarded 24-7 by trigger-happy soldiers authorized to shoot trespassers on sight. So this feeds into my concept of being hired as a mercenary. Not anybody, you know, people can try to break in, but... Chances are, if you're not really skilled and trained, if you don't have that special set of skills, uh, you're going to get shot. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do our first one. So, we roll our D6 to see what we get. Uh, that went off camera, so I need to learn to keep dice on the camera. So, let's do this again. Four. I want you to see my rolls. For some reason, that's important in life. So, we got a four. What do we got? Tripwire. So I'm just going to write down some notes. I prefer to write down. I know I don't need to write any of this stuff down, but I love to write. And there we go. I'm writing. And armor piercing. All right. So what we have to do is we have to overcome this tripwire. We got to roll over a three. This is not a fight. So looking at my character sheet, my bulletproof vest has been given to the scientist. I have a dog with me that gives me a plus one fight and plus two max HP. That's why I'm at 22. Um, but this is not a fight. A tripwire is more of a skill check. This is considered those other checks. And if we go back into the rules, other tests, all other situations that require a die check are resolved by rolling greater than X on a D6. So my tripwire is a three. 
so I have to roll over a three. I rolled a four, so we successfully passed the tripwire, but there's no reward. I get nothing. I just don't take damage. I guess not taking damage is the reward, so we're going to go with that. So now we go to the next excursion point, which is going to be the zone encounters. We're going to read the blurb. You are on excursion territory now. Better watch your steps and keep your eyes peeled. Anomalies and mutant creatures are lurking. Before rolling for a random encounter, make a 3 plus check to be or become irradiated and suffer 2 damage. So just like before, we're making a skill check before we even get to roll on our encounter. So we have to roll a three plus or become irradiated. I rolled a six. Life is good. No one's going to become irradiated. And if we would become irradiated, if we go over to our, our rules, special conditions, irradiated, uh, you, ca you can't regain HP until you use a med kit or radiation pills. Does not clear between excursions. So my max HP is, is 22. That particular irradiation uh, condition gave me a minus two. I can't rest in between missions. Like once we complete this, I can't go back to town and rest and get rid of irradiation. I have to spend my money on a med kit or radiation pills or hopefully find those things uh, during this uh, excursion to get rid of it. So that's why you would write down your, your conditions because some of them will carry over. So now we get to roll for our zone encounter and we rolled a five. So we have an enemy, we have a dweller. So let me write down my zone encounter. We have a dweller. Child sized hooded mutant with skin as black as coal that possesses terrifying psychic abilities. Times four, damage three, armor piercing, six bucks. Woo, they got some money. Special rule, out of this world, test uh, three before combat to avoid becoming shaken. Okay, a lot going on with the Dweller, but what we need is we got it. There are times four encounter, damage three, uh, armor piercing. I'm just going to write AP for armor piercing. Uh, six bucks, and I need to test uh, times three or become shaken. All right, so that's everything we need to do before we can start this encounter. So let's do our shaken test first. Six. So we passed the shaken test. We're good there. Now this one is a fight, so my bonus for my dog is going to come into play, and there are times four. This dice has been rolling good. Let's see if it continues to roll good for me. Ah, sweet. So we beat the, um, the times four, so we beat the, the dweller. And we get six bucks and we just move on. So now we're into the deep zone. Oh, this, this is making me thirsty. I need to drink some radiated soda. Mmm. Good old fashioned radiation soda. You thought the EZ was dangerous before. I have bad news for you. It gets worse. The deep zone ain't nothing to F with, stalker. The nearer you are to the heart of the zone, the angrier everything around you get. For starters, as soon as you set foot in the deep zone, make a 4 plus check to avoid becoming irradiated and taking damage 3. So, 4 plus check. Let's see if we do this. 3. So we fail because um, this is a skill check. So we do not get the bonus from the dog because the dog's bonus is only for fights. So we failed. Now let's see if the scientist takes it. No. So I take the damage and that is damage three. So we're going to go minus three. And then I'm going to make a note here that I'm irradiated minus three because this is a condition or and I, I only, it can only be cured a certain way. So technically, if I don't get a med kit or radiation pills, I cannot cure this radiation. And I will stay at a minus three to my max HP. Um, so that's something you want to sh get rid of uh, when you can. Now, I do have a med kit, so I can get rid of it. But right now, I'm trying to keep my scientist alive. So I am going to hold off. I'm just going to deal with the radiated poison. Uh, it's all good stuff. We're going to roll here for my encounter. I got a four, so we got an, another enemy. 
So we're in the deep zone. We got a four. We got a Oculus tree. Okay, so what exactly is that? Animated dead tree with a trunk and branches covered with hundreds of eyes in various sizes. All right. It attacks by whipping and strangling its prey with its flailing arms. So it's a times four D3 uh, damage six, and there's no reward. Like it's not an artifact or anything like that. This is just someone to fight. So we just want to uh, get over. Uh, we just want to kill this tree. Uh, this is not where being a tree hugger is beneficial to you in life. Uh, these trees kill. So because this is a fight, I get my bonus from my dog. So let's roll. If I get a four, okay, three plus one puts me a four. But guess what? I did not go over the four, so I fail. Now we got to see if it goes to the scientist. It does not. So I take the damage, which is minus three. And because this is a fight, we continue on. The anomaly encounters you just do once, and if you fail, you just move on afterwards. If you succeed, you just move on. But with enemies, with fights, you have to fight them to the death. So let's try this again. Three plus four. Fail again, so I gotta see if it goes to me or the scientist. It goes to me. Minus three, so I am at minus nine to my health. So things aren't going good. Let's switch dice. Let's see if that helps. Yes, so I beat it, and they don't have an HP value. Like this is a fast-paced game, so you just you're done. You move on. So that ends my excursion points. So we've gained twelve dollars. I'm at minus nine damage. I can only heal six of this damage. And we still need to be very careful using our med kit because we want to keep our scientist alive. So now we go to our bunker encounter. So this is the final leg of our journey. We want to read our blurb here. This underground facility belongs to a shady paramilitary organization known as the PRISM. Nobody knows exactly what their end goal is, but they sure as hell seem to have an eerie reverence for everything related to the zone. So no, no tests, no nothing. We're just in kind of a creepy place, which tells me my encounters are going to be kind of rough. So let's see what we get. We got a three enemy security guard times three damage three, four dollars. So that one's pretty simple. I, I guess I can consider myself lucky. So we got a times four, oh, times three security guard, uh, damage three, four dollars. It looks like what uh, Martin did here, enemy security guard times three for the three, four, five, and just jumped up the funds that you receive for fighting them. So that's kind of cool. Razor birds. This flock of invisible birds will pierce your body in a thousand different places if you find yourself in their way oh glad we didn't get that one all right so this should be pretty good i just have to roll a uh, uh three or better because this is a fight and i have my dog with me i rolled a six we beat that encounter everything's good we've completed our mission uh, we, we took the scientists in. We do not come back out. I guess if you wanted to, you could take them back out. Um, that would be up to you. But it basically, once you get to your, your target location, the game is done. And now we go to our jobs. And we successfully did the job. So it gives us 2d6 in funds. Um, unfortunately, we didn't find crap um, in this mission. So... Let's just hope we find a bunch of money. Uh, eight's not bad. So we got another eight dollars um, for this. So we got twenty-four dollars uh, total for our 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 mission. So we would add that to the funds that we already have. I just do hash marks because I'm going to end up spending that because I have to do. I'm going to have to get rid of this radiation, which is going to require me to use a med kit. Now that we're back and I own a med kit, I'm going to roll a d6 and see how many um, HP I regain because I have to regain over three to get rid of it all. I gained two from that med kit. 
so my med kit goes away and my radiation only goes down to minus one so i'd have to buy another med kit to get rid of that radiation plus or radiation pills plus i also want to heal my damage so this is where you go to the black market and um, start doing things. I can heal my six points of damage by spending money, and then I'm just stuck with the one radiation, which I could just leave that alone and be okay with just the minus one for my next job so I can keep my money. So that's kind of how it all works. Uh, this is just a fun little game uh, that I've been having fun with. Um, you know, some suggestions to Martin uh, would be to first maybe make the character sheet more usable with, you know, the HP and the forfeited job mechanics. Um, I believe I talked about forfeiting jobs earlier, but if I didn't, let me recap on that. You can forfeit jobs. So if you roll up a job and you're like, that ain't going to work, you can forfeit it and, and, and move on and roll for a different job. But if you do that, you can only do it three times and the game's over. So maybe making a, a tracking mechanism on the sheet. The other thing I'd, you know, maybe edit the weather uh, chart to just add the numbers in. Um, I had to handwrite the numbers in. But outside of that, everything looks pretty cool. I'm liking the, the non-printed, non-art version, but um, I'm hoping that eventually this game gets put into a printed version with all the, the background information and just on a nice paper and I'd like to add it to my collection of head cheese production games. One of the things I love about Martin's games is these are great games to take with you on the go. Something you can take to work with you and uh, you, you know you could print this, this could be a PDF game and you can just have it on your phone. It's something you can play at lunch when you're just kind of being alone uh, in the break room or in a quiet place. You can just have a little bit of fun because it just requires 2d6, a little a piece of paper to write down some information, and you can just have a good time with it. This Stallcrog is a campaign game, so that makes it a lot different than Escape the Zone uh, because you're going to continue to go back in and go back in because the goal is to really improve your character by finding stuff, getting stuff from the black market, getting your money, so that way you can retire as a stalker and end your career as being a stalker and enjoy the, um, I don't know, the toxic beaches of wherever. <laughs> so, uh, so it's just a fun game. Martin, thank you very much for putting out another wonderful product and um, entrusting me with a, a preview copy to show it off on the channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.